Hey Sasquatch, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a minute here on the channel since I posted anything. So while I was low rank, I thought it'd be a lot of fun to finally run my hundo party hat Bulbasaur. Just to give you an idea of what this team is looking like. This is its rating here in PV Poke, and honestly, Bulbasaur is a little it's pretty much like a worse Venusaur. But I figured, you know, we're in low rank and these battles probably weren't going to be so sweaty or try hard but boy was i wrong and that's where we're going to bring this video today i'm going to show you some of my favorite sets of playing during go battle league this weekend showcasing party hat bulbasaur so i hope you enjoy this video and definitely consider giving a like and commenting it does help my content reach a wider audience here on youtube and let's just jump into the battles all right so in this very first battle we actually get to face off against a Sceptile. Who is the true superior grass type here? Is it Party Hat Bulbasaur or is it Sceptile? I have a feeling that we can tank this move thinking it's either a Dragon Claw or a Leaf Blade. They do end up going for the Leaf Blade, which we can easily tank. I return a Sludge Bomb back. No respect here for Bulbasaur. And they bring in Jirachi and I decide to switch into my Stun Fist thinking, well, what, what's the worst case scenario here? Like obviously a counter, but Blastoise, honestly, gonna have to respect a shield here from Stunfisk. They don't want to take some damage after getting hit by a Sludge Bomb. They probably weren't even taking me serious until they realize, oh, there's a Stunfisk? Oh, no. But anyways, this is pretty good. We get both shields here. Blastoise could have definitely eaten one of those. But they decided to actually go for a Hydro Cannon, which, again, really good for us that they're wasting their energy. We bring in Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur supremacy here. Like, I mean, come on, Power Whip, no respect. And now it's just pretty much going to be game because I wasn't sure if they were going to, you know, I, I should have realized they weren't probably even at a psychic at this point, but yeah, they end up just kind of spamming the doom desire here, I think for the rest of the battle. So yeah, pretty much going to be GG here. I mean, we can live that. And I guess to be fair, the thing about Mantine that definitely takes a little bit of a skill curve to use this Pokemon. Sometimes it's better to just go for Ice Beam. So even if it's a move that's resisted, sometimes it's just better to get that higher damage move off because there's been battles where I lose just to like one HP. So in this scenario, it's still fine. We are able to pull off the win, so GG to them. So in this next battle, we get an Ozzy lead, which is just amazing for us. They bring in the Pidgeot and couldn't ask for a better safe swap here because they really can't do anything with Pidgeot. We're not afraid of a Brave Bird, we're not afraid of Feather Dance. They end up going for the bait, and maybe to just allow them to, uh, you know, live a couple rock slides here, which could make sense. Does not, not even a bad play, honestly. But um, I think we should still be able to knock out on another rock slide. So it's kind of a tough call. I mean, I feel like maybe getting off one Brave Bird here would have been a little more beneficial for the Pidgeot, but yeah, they end up committing the shield and at this point, they want to switch out into their Obstagoon to kind of get a little bit of an energy lead. I'm going to match their Obstagoon with my Mantine, knowing that Bulbasaur has a pretty solid matchup with Azumarill. And we kind of just need a chunk. So I'm just going to go for the Ice Beam to get off some of that damage. And fortunately for us, they don't shield. You know, maybe thinking I'm going to Bubble Beam. But now I'm going to Bubble Beam and just kind of get off as much Wing Attack damage as I can before I die. And Beautifully, we actually do get a shield here, and I'm just gonna let the Mantine go. Oh wait, no, I actually let it live. I guess I was so close to that bubble beam that I figured, hey, it's probably not a bad call to just shield, because the best case scenario is like maybe bring an Azu. I'm gonna go for the, you know, this is not necessarily the best call on my end to play it like this. Um, the main reason being is that they actually do farm up some energy here, and I probably. Yeah, this is kind of bad, honestly. But um, I'm just going to bring in the Bulbasaur, and since I did get those bubble beams off, I'm going to let the Ice Beam go through. And they end up bringing Pidgeot, and I think what I end up doing is shielding, and then I switch out, go for the Rock Slide, knock out Pidgeot. I probably could have farmed a little bit of extra energy here, but I also suspected that, honestly, as long as we um, 
Yeah, I, you know what? I think it would have been safer to gain that level of energy. Fortunately, it works out for us where we do get off the EQ here. But, um, yeah, they had so much energy on Azu. That could have gone wrong. Alright, so in this next battle, we get a Scizor lead. Not necessarily the best for us, but I'm going to actually safe swap here to Stun Fisk. And they just stay in. They're going for Night Slash. I think because they get this boost, they decide they want to stay in here because the Bullet Punch does actually kind of do a little bit of a damage. Like, it's actually alright damage here. And the Night Slashes are going to be a little... Like, they're going to be hitting for a decent chunk now that it has the attack boost. So I will shield one of them, and I go for another Rock Slide. Um, I think I'm just going to let this... Oh yeah, I think I decide, like, it's probably better just to, like, get the next Rock Slide off. And even if I don't knock out Scizor, at least I can bring it down low enough where, you know, maybe we can just farm it down. But fortunately for us, this does create a scenario where we are cl we can just farm it down. But in comes Hypno, and... I'm going to just go for the EQ to get off some chip damage, which is really nice. And now I'm going to try to stay in and just... They're, going, they're trying to farm me down, which makes sense, but fortunately I live with like 1 HP, and I actually rock slide, which allows me to secure that knockout, which now at this point, I'm going to play it super safe. I'm going to bring in Mantine on the Azu and pretty much lower its attack. Once it exerts some energy, I'm going to switch to Bulba and then go straight for a Power Whip. And we should be good because a Nice Beam is not going to knock us out with the attack drop. Like, I don't think it does even at full health without an attack drop. But yeah, just kind of, like I said, creating a really safe scenario for us to secure the win. So this is the dream. I mean, I saw so many Swamperts. I think that's like a standard meta team right now, like double flying with like Swampert. So it's been kind of funny just having the Bulba greet these Swamperts. I didn't want to post a lot of Swampert matches, but you can just imagine there actually was a lot of those. So we are against this Knockdown, and the thing about the Knockdown matchup is it actually can flip this now, that with the new wing attack buff, um, especially with like an energy lead and such, I feel like that was a little bit of a slow switch on my end, but we definitely have to shield these some of these Shadow Balls, because the scenario about this is a lot of times you just get down low enough for it. You can't really farm it, but I'm thinking that this is probably not the best IV knockdown. And it's just, we got lucky with that too, that it just happened to just be a sky attack. But I think because I'm assuming it just isn't the best IV. So that's why we brought it down so low. It, didn't, it probably didn't have as much H HP as a high rank knockdown. But yeah, that's pretty much what I was assuming in that scenario. And here, I just figured they're probably going to go for the Feather Dance, like... It just makes sense that they might not want to throw a Brave Bird turn 1. And fortunately for us, that is what they end up doing, and... Instead of me shielding it all... I th do I shield this? I don't think I do. I think I just risk it, and... Fortunately for us, it does pay off to just kind of let it go like this, but then I undertap this, which... Um... I don't know what I was thinking there, like, that was a little weird for me to undertap that. Like, I thought I could, like farm it down but yeah that was just really weird how that played out i should have just not under tapped at all being you know feather danced and all that and you know there we go it still kind of end up being in a good scenario because their move can't knock us out their feather dance can't knock out my man team because of the bubble beam so really weird scenario where i didn't get too punished for my bad call but yeah we can actually vine whip down hijot now which is super cool so gg so this is, again, I'm like literally playing my first battles, like I'm ranked 2 right now. Like this is insane, like this is like what what I'm seeing, like... I just thought it was crazy that like, straight out of the gate I was just seeing people running like legitimate Pokemon and like actually, you know, viable teams. So yeah, I thought that was very interesting, like I don't know, are these people all the counts? Of, like are these people in the same mindset as me, like... Like I waited, I wasn't waiting to play during Go Battle all day, I just saw that there was stuff I can get earned by just doing 10 battles. And then I just got, like, I started having a little fun running the Bulbasaur, so I just did a little bit more. But yeah, this battle, um, I, uh, it's pretty interesting how it plays out because, you know, I figured it might have Thunder Punch. It does seem like upon playing this out, it is revealed that this Hypno is double elemental, but yeah, actually it's kind of crazy because if I would have maybe thought, like, oh, I'm going to save swap to my Mantine on the Hypno instead in this type of fight, I could have secured the win, and you're going to see why I can't win this battle very shortly. But again, this is like, um, 
Let me see. Yeah, like these are. This is like actually like a good team. You know, I feel like it's, it's a 1463 Shadow Swampert. So this person's definitely like on a budget still. You know what I mean? Like they're running a budget type of team, but the picks are still relatively good, right? Like the Hypno is actually 1496, which is solid. I assume. I don't know. It could be deceptive IVs. I mean, CP also. But yeah, they're running a Bastiodon, which if I'm looking at it, it doesn't look like it's. It's, it's not max, right? I think it's like 1300 something. 1390. But I'm like, this has to be potentially maybe like an XL that they're building. And to be fair, it doesn't really matter that much if it's maxed or not. But yeah, I, like seeing a Bassiodon on my rank 2 battle, like that's kind of crazy. Uh, or is, maybe it's not crazy. But yeah, let's jump into the, some more battles here. So in this next battle, we lose the lead to a Hypno, and I'm going to safe swap into my Stun Fisk. And they opt to stay in for a moment. I think they're running Fire Punch. I'm guessing that's like a very common move. It's been a while since I've played any Go Battle. Like I took a little hiatus for a couple months just because I needed some time to focus on other stuff. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Yeah. So yeah, they're just throwing the Fire Punches, and in comes a Surviper, or uh, Superior. Excuse me, not Surviper. What am I saying? Superior. So yeah, we're just gonna not shield, and it is a leaf tornado, so we can actually live that. And I will bring in Mantine, knowing that the wing attack damage is actually gonna be really nice here. And I will probably just let the first frenzy go through. I'm I'm okay with it. Gonna build a little bit of extra energy, go for the ice beam, and yeah, that's gonna knock out. So in comes the hypno again, and I'm gonna go for an ice beam. I'm not gonna mess around here and go for a bubble beam. I'm just gonna try to chip some legitimate damage here. And that does work out pretty good, but now we're in a weird position where it's like, what do I do here? So I just bring in the st uh, Stun Fisk, go straight for the Rock Slide. They make a great call to catch it, but at the same time, is this really the best call? Because now I can just remove their Bastiodon with the Earthquake. Like, isn't this crazy? Like, another Bastiodon. But, um, yeah. Come in with Bulbasaur, and uh, it's kind of a tough matchup at this point. I don't know if I can get to it fast enough. I Pretty sure that the fire punch just knocked me out at this range. But yeah. Oh! I live with one HP in a dream. And the Bulbasaur <laughs> removes it with a power whip. I remember now. How could I have forgot? Yeah, that was a tough one. Like, that was actually a really difficult battle. I was impressed by me winning that. Alright, so in this one, they bring in the Nidda Queen. And unfortunately, it seemed like they were lagging a little bit. But I think if I remember this correctly, they have like a good situation that ends up like still messing me up regardless of getting that little bit of advantage we'll see though i can't remember 100 percent but yeah the meta cham here is obviously like a hard counter scenario but we are going to make them respect us with our earthquake damage unfortunately we get that but yeah they know this is a rock slide so they're not going to shield and oh wait what it did shield how does this play out i can't remember how this plays out um so I'm going to shield the Psychic, thinking like, yeah, maybe they want to get some chip off. But at this point, I'm just going to let the next move, I think, go through and just farm. Oh no, I do shield. I probably shouldn't have shielded that. Yeah, I think I was a little nervous, but I shouldn't have shielded that. Yeah, I think this is kind of a tough one. I can't imagine like how I come back from this. Like, this seems like... A, like, shielding that Ice Punch was brutal, because now they can do... They can just knock me out with a rock slide. I think I might try to catch a rock slide here. But yeah, I don't think I really have much play. Like I, I catch the rock slide. I think I try I think I connect one power whip on Nidda Queen, but it's not enough damage. And I think like the Stun Fisk will outpace to a rock slide here. I think that's how this plays out, if I remember correctly. So I go for a power whip. Yeah. I tried to remove this right away because, you know, can't really do much. Yeah, that's game. Kind of get knocked out here. I think I got scared and I went for the bubble beam, but the rock slide's going to knock me out. Yeah, there was nothing I could do, like, realistically in that scenario. Like, even if I, li like, living that from the bubble, from the bubble beam doesn't do anything. But yeah, like, maybe the shield scenario could have been a little bit different because... I think just having one shield for the end could have been alright. 
Seismic Toad lead very spicy, by the way. But they end up switching into this fracture, and like honestly, I didn't know what to do. Like the Dragon Tail, I'm assuming it's Dragon Tail here, is like wrecking me. And I shielded just to see, like, what is it running? It's Aqua Tail, so I'm like, okay, I'll bring in Mantine. But even bringing Mantine on this, I was like, is this really the right play? Because that fast attack damage is brutal right now. And thankfully, they just throw another water move and I didn't have to shield, but yeah, they go straight for an ice beam. I'm like, uh, I'm just gonna have to let it go, I think, at this point, and hope that there's a scenario where I can bring in Stun Fist and kind of farm down for energy and not really worry too much. But yeah, I think even here, I decided to just take the Aqua Tell, and it's like, yeah, this is kind of brutal. Very brutal scenario. They bring in the Seismitoad. I decided to bring in Bulba and just kind of pressure it, and I'm like, I guess I got a shield. And fortunately for us, the running is, is it Spuda or something? I'm very spicy. I cannot believe they're running this. But it was like, it makes you wonder, like, is this even a real team? Because that was like a 200 CP Pokemon right there. Like, this is kind of crazy that this is like, probably not even a real team that I'm facing in actually <laughs> part of the way. But uh, yeah, GG to that person. Bulbasaur is definitely a Pokemon. Okay, this is, there's just so many battles that I did that were worth sharing that I had to post this video and create it. Because, you know, obviously I don't think Bulbasaur is a good Pokemon that you should run, but it's just so funny. I mean, it's satisfying running into a Shadow Victory Bell and it can't overcome the Bulbasaur. I'm the superior Poison Grass type here. In comes the Welrin, and do they respect me? Let's find out. Oh no, it's a Dugong, excuse me. So I'm going to actually just switch out into my Stunfisk, and they do not want to switch out, you know, for whatever reason, maybe the energy lead on Stunfisk is not good for them, but I'm going to predict that they're going to Icy Wind the bait, and they end up Dugong for the Icy Wind, which, good call on our end to not shield that, but I was thinking now they're going to probably go for a Water Pulse, because they're going to think I'm going to get comfortable and not shield here. And they do end up going for Water Pulse, which, again, really good call on my end, because now we're in a pretty good position to just kind of remove this Dugong. And I think what I do is I end up just like building up a little bit of energy, and I bring in my Mantine, knowing that whatever move they go for, I can tank it, and whatever they end up bringing in, we can kind of just like do some chip with Mantine, maybe even debuff them with the Bubble Beam. That's what we end up opting to do here. We're just going to go for the Bubble Beam. They end up going for Rock Slide on Mew, and I'm just going to go for an Ice Beam at this point. So I can get some okay damage off, and yeah, it's pretty much just GG. They're going to farm me down, but it's really whatever. I'm just going to bring in the Balba. Uh, it could have been bad here if I, you know, if they just farm me down, to be honest, but yeah, they ended up like throwing a move, scared that maybe I did have, maybe not remembering how much energy is on Bulbasaur, and I'd say that's actually a big reason why I win this. I mean, they could have potentially switched out with energy and maybe got off two Psy Shocks and could have maybe killed me. I don't really know the damage calc of the Psy Shock versus the Stun Fisk. I mean, I resist it, but maybe it could have knocked out there. Good game. All right, so in this battle, we get a Stun Fisk lead, and I'm just going to stay in with Balba and go for a Power Whip. So, yeah, we're going to just straight up connect the power whip it does a decent amount of damage i mean respectable and i think i just decided to let it go if they earthquake me whatever so okay they do rock slide and i think at this point i'm like okay i'm gonna commit a shield because i can get respect by this stun fisk here and they end up switching into a venusaur and i was like okay that's a good call bring in venusaur i'm gonna bring in mantine farm it down for the most part um i'm gonna bait them like I build up to the Ice Beam and I go for the Bubble Beam. And they end up shielding knowing that they didn't want to just die to an Ice Beam. So really good for us. We can actually tank this first Frenzy. And I think I will commit a shield now. And I think I farm Venusaur down at this range. So with that being said, in comes the Stunfisk. And I probably should have just went for Ice Beam here, but I can't remember if they shield or not. Yeah, they don't shield there. And I feel like, yeah, I should have just gone for the Ice Beam. But in comes Lantern, we are just going to go for Bubble Beam, and we bring in our Stun Fisks. So this is super good because the Surf's not going to hurt as much as it typically would, and we will be able to like threaten this Lantern. They have to respect the Earthquake, and they don't respect it, so their Lantern just goes down, and at this point, there's really nothing they can do. I mean, 
Between the Bulbasaur being in the back as well, they're just going to get fast attack down. So that's just GG. So I thought that was pretty funny that this person is actually running almost like a very similar idea or team. But their Bulbasaur just uh, kind of like did not help. I mean, their Venusaur got disrespected by a Bulbasaur. So that's the main reason why I wanted to include this set. Uh, GG's, by the way. All right, so this is the final set that I'm going to showcase here on the video today. And we get ourselves a Shadow Wellrun lead. Obviously not the best case scenario, but... I just thought I'm just going to stay in. I mean, this I didn't play all good because what I wanted to do was to catch the Icicle Sphere. I should have switched out there, but I guess I just predicted wrong. I wasn't sure if they would build up extra or what, but yeah, really bad call my end because I feel like that was huge because tanking an Icicle Sphere here would have been really ideal in my, in my opinion. So we go for the rock side and they just let the Wellrun go. So the Wellrun pretty much did what it had to do. But then they end up having this in the back, and I was like, wait, what? Um, this is kind of crazy. So they have the Latios, and I go for the Rock Slide, and they do shield, and I'm gonna commit a shield here and try to connect my Earthquake to remove it. I figured I can get to the Earthquake, and it will go down. But then I was thinking, oh my gosh, actually this Mewtwo could be really scary here. I mean, I don't know if it's running Psy Shock or not, and I go for the Bubble Beam, and then we're about to see what its move reveal is, and it ends up going for it. This was just like a roller coaster of a battle. It goes for frustration, I was just like... <laughs> see what I'm saying? Like, these early battles were so all over the place, but... Alright, so we get a Shadow Mawile, and I wasn't really sure if I'd be seeing Ice Fang or Fire Fang, but it does look like we're facing a Fairy Wind Mawile. I decided to shield, thinking they're going to throw an Iron Head, and I just go for a Sludge Bomb. They end up letting it connect, and it does a decent chunk, but I want to try to catch the next Iron Head on my Stunfisk, and I think I did successfully call that. So we do make a good call, and at this point, I'm like, I'm just going to throw the Rock Slide, because they got to respect it, you know? And they just let them all while go. Good call, I guess. Um, they bring in Altaria. So I'm going to just throw these rock slides and yeah, I don't know. I guess they didn't have anything to deal with the Sunfisk. So they want to remove this. Like they they do not like the Sunfisk. But um, yeah, in comes the Skarmory and we throw the rock slide, but I'm going to bring in Manti now. And at this point, I'm going to just throw a bubble beam just to kind of like weaken the Skarmory a bit. And I can just safely kind of sit on it and then start going for ice beams. So I think I just let this get through, knowing that like they're probably not going to go for Brave Bird. And Ice Beam should like do a decent chunk. There's a really good chance that they're not going to shield here. And Ice Beam connecting will bring them into the red, which allows us to kind of just like not shield. And oh, I, actually, I think I was thinking shielding was actually a pretty good decision here. Um, I don't remember if they shield this or not. Yeah, obviously it would have been better if I actually threw Ice Beam, but... I'm not sure if they were counting or if they just weren't afraid of the ice beam for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, we uh, threw a rock slide. They do shield, and this is actually kind of insane battle because this could be a loss. This could so easily be a loss for us if it doesn't play out to the point where we can like outpace the Altaria to a move. So I brought in Bulbasaur hoping to just remove, like expend all the energy the Altaria has. and. Fortunately for us, they actually were afraid of Mantine, and they do switch out. And then, because of the switch out scenario, thinking they, they were going to catch an Ice Beam, they end up just feeding us the energy we need to actually knock out Altaria. So, fortunately for us, that worked out really nicely. Alright, we get a Swampert lead. Super good for us, I mean, they end up switching to Air Slash Tropius, and before I switch out, I'm going to grace this Tropius with Sludge Bomb, and then I'm going to switch in my Thunfisk. And I figured... We could probably build a little bit of extra energy and just tank like a Leaf Blade or two if we really had to. Um, I probably could have played that a little bit different, but yeah, I think I decided like, you know, I'm just going to farm down. I'm just going to take the next Leaf Blade and just have energy for the Swampert to throw Earthquake. Swampert still has to respect the uh, Stun Fisk here. So this is pretty solid if they shield, which they kind of have to. And then they end up just throwing Hydro right away, which again, super good because now we can just bring in Bulba and kind of do our thing. They end up having a pile of swine and I just brought in Mantine because I felt like 
This is just solid. We can double beam the, the pile of swine down. We're not really too scared here. Um, I decided to shield the first avalanche. And then I'm like, you know, we don't need to shield the second. And I was a little impressed by the output of damage by Pylo, but yeah, even with like the minus attack, that was like a lot of, that was a good chunk. But yeah, they end up shielding here. And I was thinking, wow, that's actually kind of crazy, but I felt slightly confident that like with the, with that scenario, I was going to be able to live, but I was like, holy, I barely lived. And fortunately I was able to pull that off because holy smokes, that was actually kind of insane that I live with one HP. Um, I feel like potentially I was still good. Like maybe I could have farmed down the vine whip and then still just got the power whip off, like shielded the swampert. But um, yeah, that was really crazy. GG. And in this next battle, we get an Umbreon lead. And honestly, I kind of misplay this if I remember correctly. So they did a good job of like, kind of just like switching out and like messing up the clock. Cause I, you know, I didn't really need to throw a move there. <clears throat> It was a little unnecessary of me. In fact, I probably could have just let this go. But what I wanted to do initially was try to catch a sky attack on Stunfisk. And I think like the way I played that was not the most optimal. It became very sloppy really fast. So I built a decent amount of energy up a Bulbasaur, but that might not even really help us out later in the fight. And now we're just kind of down bad because we weren't able to remove the Altaria when we had the chance because the switch timer is all messed up. We end up just getting one shot by the Swamper at this point. Yeah, this is just not good, if you ask me. Um, they end up shielding this, which I thought was very strange, but um, we are going to be able to remove Swamper. But yeah, I just didn't think this was like the best scenario because now at this point, what can we possibly do? Um, they're going to sky attack us. We're going to try to just remove the Altaria with the Ice Beam. And I think they might have Ozu in the back or, or, oh no, it's the Umbreon. Yeah, with this, it's way too spammy and it's going to be outputting too much damage that we can't tank it. Going for a bubble beam isn't going to save us or do much here, to be honest. And yeah, like I said, just that initial lineup where I like kept in Balsor a little too long on Altaria was a little messy. Having that shield advantage here could have maybe been beneficial. You know, maybe we could have gone for at least two or three bubble beams before we had to start tanking them to the face. But yeah, obviously not really the best case scenario. And I feel like, um, yeah, I, again, like if I could have caught that sky attack and maybe aligned, like that switch timer would have been a little more aligned too also, because I kind of stayed in to gain that energy to equal, like equal what was going on. But yeah, this is the final battle and this is just not even a serious one, but yeah, I just wanted to thank you all for checking out this video, and if you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. But I just wanted to say I really appreciate people still being here and subscribe to the channel. And with that being said, the Sasquatch King Strong each and every day. Good morning, evening, afternoon, we tune in. I'll catch you in the next one.